But is there something different about some big name hitter? You just throw a fastball by him, and in your head, are you like, oh yeah, I'm also a big leaguer? Some proof that like, oh yeah, I I have big league stuff, yeah, just like it, they. Like. It, it was Mike Trout. I, I struck him out on a fastball. <laughs> that was in the zone. I'm like, how did he miss that? This is the greatest hitter ever. <laughs> right. I'm like, I, I I I guess I can I can I can do this, you know. Have you uh, tried to teach any of your teammates a little French? Yeah, you know, everybody tries to. They ask me how to say a couple things in French. Uh, Can we say those words? Yeah, usually radio? not. You know, it's the same thing. <laughs> but vice versa, though. You know, when I first started learning English, all these guys would learn all the bad words. So I would go to someone and I'd speak with all the bad words, and the person would look at me like, "What's wrong with this guy?" You know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I've uh, I've learned a lot so far, and I'm still not great, but uh, I'm a little better than what I used to. All right, in a big moment, if you strike out, big moment, commit a costly error, and a bad word comes to mind. Are you doing that in French or English? Um, you know, I, I learned the F word pretty quick with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it's a cool one to say. You know, it's quick, you know. <laughs> it's so, a versatile word, yeah. right? I mean, it could be positive, yeah. it could be negative. So uh, I like it. Yeah, okay. Back home, we don't have access to a field. Uh, 12 months out of the year so it's a lot of stuff in the cages and I, I hit a lot as you probably can, can tell I, I just hit when I was younger and I couldn't take ground balls as much and when I, once I got to pro ball I kind of realized how the, the Latin players or all the guys from the United States that live down south they've just been taking way many more ground balls as me so as soon as I, I got to pro ball I told myself I was going to take more ground balls than everybody else and I was going to catch them up and I was going to have my the same amount of ground balls in five years because I'm going to take 2,000 more ground balls every day than most of them. So um, ever since I've been here with the Twins, I just take so many ground balls. I work and I work and I, I try to get better. And I think defensively it's more about um, the rep repetition and how hard you work than just skill. So um, I've been working so hard with Tony and all the, the other guys behind the scene. And um, I'm just trying to be a better player and I'm just trying to help the team win. And I knew that by being a better defender, it would help the team win. The lineup is unbelievable. Yeah. The defense could be gold glove all the way up the middle to the sides. Um, I, I see nine gold glovers. I see nine guys that can hit 40. I see guys that can steal bases now that everyone's healthy. I see pitchers that are going to go dominate uh, with some swag and some flair like Joe Ryan. I'd, I'd love to see him do a little hair flip. I don't have hair, so <laughs> I'm jealous. I, I want to see a strikeout, a little hair flip. Uh, and then maybe Pablo, to me, maybe we could just put our heads together with Baldies. So <laughs> a couple strikeouts or something. I don't know. This team is amazing, guys. I I'm so excited. I don't know if you could tell, but, um, I mean, like you said, everywhere across the diamond we have so much going on. And He was the one that lit the match, that, that blew this place up. I mean, like, what does it say about him that he's able to, to meet that moment the way that he does? Royce has been nothing short of, of amazing, and I don't say that lightly. I never drop things like that uh, for the sake of it. Um, he can do things and take over a baseball game. In other sports, you can give the ball to you know one of your best players or your best player and let them just win the game for you. You can do that. You only get a few opportunities in baseball. You have to make the most of those opportunities, focus, and then get it done against the best pitchers uh, in the world. Royce... My God. I mean, I'm thinking, base is loaded. I'm thinking this guy's going to hit the ball over the fence. I've never had that feeling in 20-some-odd years of professional baseball. I'm like, he's going to do it again. And then he would do it. And <laughs> just uh, amazing. But um, I think uh, he has all the physical ability. But what makes him a very, very exciting player and allows him to perform is his mind and, and the way that he can channel and focus and, and approach the way he's going through things. Because it's really easy to lose focus and just start thinking big and thinking he's going to go deep every at bat. Then you don't have good at bats when that happens. He's so good at, at just simply focusing on very simple things and producing. And uh, uh, we're going to see a lot more of that from him, undoubtedly. But that run that he was on, um, I couldn't believe what I was seeing couldn't believe it how did it motivate you last year having to be on the sidelines and watching what this team accomplished did that give you a different kind of spark for this offseason it did you know um what we did last year was incredible you know but just yesterday everybody meeting up you can tell we all back on that same page and we all got that chip you know where we want to get back and go farther and get that ring here so 
it put in that perspective to where all the hard work that you put in in the off season, it ain't just for you. It's for those those guys in that clubhouse, you know. And those guys in the clubhouse is who you're around eight, nine months out of the year. So you got to figure out how you can bring the best to the table every day for those guys. Yeah, I'm happy. Happy to be back in center. Um, DH was just it's mental, you know. When you can't go out there and die for a ball or take away a hit from somebody else, uh, you start getting in your head a little bit and. It's just one of those like domino effects when you don't stop the overthinking or stop the negative thoughts. You just kind of keep digging yourself in that hole. So for me, it was always keeping in mind that I was always going to go back to center. You know, last year, if I always kept my mind, I was going to go back to center. I was going to go back to center. I didn't let myself get down or let myself get, you know, depressed or whatever. I stayed even killed and it allowed me to play as much as I could last year, you know, and then when it happened, it happened. So... That's when it really kind of set in, like, I knew, knew I was getting surgery way before probably anybody else did. I knew that in July, you know. So, for me, I wanted to fight to get back for these guys in that clubhouse, not for me to get on the field. I knew how much I cared for them, and I knew how much they cared for me. So, I wanted them to know how much I had their back. Uh, Pete is really good at simplifying things. So... Basically, you know, he told me that I have good stuff, so trust your stuff and throw it over that white plate. Uh, and there's obviously a lot more that goes into pitching and how you're moving and how the ball is coming out and all sorts of things. But, you know, Pete kind of does a good thing, good job of dumbing it down a little bit and just telling us to go out there and trust our stuff and throw it over the plate, and usually it's going to work out. So that's what I really like about Pete. Yeah, I was able to uh, get to know Pete um, before he was the pitching coach. He was actually my minor league pitching coordinator um, uh, back before we were both in the majors. But um, Pete came from college, and he came from Duke, so very smart guy. But he's also, like Brock said, he's able to dumb it down and just make things understandable on a, on a personable level. So um, Pete was kind of the first bridge that uh, the Twins organization had to adopting the analytics um, change to the game and so I got to see that firsthand and I developed that relationship with Pete um, so when he came to the big leagues I think uh, he was the right guy right guy for it he uh, had that background in analytics but he's also like Brock said was able just to tell you on a personal level and just and make it simple and I think that was a, a big reason why we had so, so much success this past year we like you like being a reliever yeah, did I like being. Like, did either of you guys like starting in the big leagues? I like, like being a reliever now when I never throw met hard. A reliever that was like, oh yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I hated it. I absolutely reliever? hated being a starter. No, oh, being a starter. Oh no, for sure. Um, it takes a lot of guessing out of the game. I mean, uh, to go out there knowing you're only going to throw one inning, I just try to throw my best pitches as hard as I can, um, as as little as I can. I don't want to go out there throwing 25 pitches. You know, that's a bad outing for me. But uh, I think it takes a lot of that that preparation stress out of it because if you're starting you know you have the entire night before to worry about it um sometimes or even like the five days in between starts um but any and, and again like if i have uh, not my best outing um i still know that i'm gonna come in the uh, the ballpark the next day and have a chance to affect that ball game in a positive way so i think it just helps you bounce back and stay more even keeled i agree with griff um as a reliever you have more of a routine you know you might pitch pretty much every game that you're out there but uh i do miss as a as a starter being able to sit in the dugout for four games and spit some sunflower seeds and hang <laughs> hang out with the boys until you you know your fifth day that's that's your start day I, I do miss that a little bit so much good stuff coming out of twins fest i'm going to put links down in the description uh make sure to go check out the gleeman and the geek winter meltdown episode if you haven't yet varland and walner were on that i felt like matt walner in particular really came out of his shell more than i'd ever previously heard uh, those guys seem like they had a good time on that, so go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. And then where most of this came from, over seven hours of video of interviews from Twins Fest is available on MLB.com. There was a bunch of stuff I haven't even listened to the, on this yet, so this was just a sampling of some of my favorite things that I had heard. Uh, but encourage you, as you have time, go check that out. As you can see here from this still, this is Joe Polad, Derek Falvey, and Dave St. Peter had a panel at the very end there. So link in the, the, the description for that one as well. Uh, but thanks for watching this one. I really appreciate it. We'll talk again soon.